There is a long-standing and ongoing debate between the effectiveness of traditional martial arts and mixed martial arts, MMA versus TMA. And there's a lot of claims on both sides. And one of the claims that comes up is that MMA is not as effective in self-defense because it's really mainly a sport and trained for the ring. So I thought that that little aspect might be worth pulling out, taking a look at, and we asked the question, will MMA work in real life self-defense? So my short answer is, will MMA work in real life self-defense? Yes, I believe it absolutely could. Now, I want to make a distinction, and I'm using the word could instead of would. Would denotes something a little bit more too definitive. And when it comes to self-defense and martial arts, I don't believe that anything is definitive because everything's contextual, everything is based on scenario, and there's a lot of circumstances that can come into play that will affect whether or not you can defend yourself or not. So you're talking about a skill set where you're putting your hands on another person, there's a lot that can go wrong. So I, I want to make that statement of saying, yes, I believe they could work. I don't believe that any art is definitive. Any art has pros and cons to it, whether self-defense based or not. And I think it's worth taking a look at today. And MMA is no exception to that. Now, when we talk about MMA, the mixed martial arts, the technical definition is just a fighter who's got multiple disciplines that they're putting together to their own fight style. So it can be a mixture of any arts. But in today's context, for the topic and purposes of this video, we are referring to the mix, specifically MMA that you see in the UFC or cage fighting, the sport aspect of it. And typically, every fighter is a little bit different, but typically you see a combination of judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, or, or some form of karate and other striking arts. That's kind of the core of what you usually see in the UFC. So we're gonna kind of, for today's video, of today's purposes, we're gonna use that as the definition of MMA, is what you typically see in the cage. Because when it comes to the discussion and debate between traditional arts and mixed martial arts, people always ask, well, how can we never see this work in the cage? So we're gonna take that, we're gonna take whatever works in the cage and see if it works on the street. And honestly, the truth of the matter is, it comes down to each individual person, each individual fighter skills. Just because you train in MMA does not automatically mean you can defend yourself. You still have skills to develop. You've got timing, you've got conditioning, you have to have strategy in combat. You know, not everybody just takes that naturally or not everybody gets good at that. So if you have a person who has trained in MMA but they're not particularly good at it, you know, they could lose to somebody from another traditional martial art. It comes down to the individual person. So just because you learn an art or you learn, go to a gym and you learn a discipline does not automatically make you good at it. But looking objectively, I do believe that MMA fighters have extreme fighting skills, and I do think that they have a high chance to be able to defend themselves in a real-life situation, but it goes deeper than that. Every discipline has pros and cons, and I don't believe that there's a single art or a single school out there that fits the mold of being the best of every aspect of fighting or self-defense, and that's why I encourage mixing and finding the pieces that you like that fit together. MMA has pros and cons, and we're going to take a look at them right now in the context of self-defense. Now, I personally think that MMA fighters have a lot more pros and cons, a lot more advantages and disadvantages, mainly because these are usually trained athletes. These are people who many times do this as a career or even as, as, as maybe as an amateur career, but they take this very seriously. If they're a cage fighter, then, they are, then they're doing this at a pretty significant um, level of commitment. So you have fighters who fight on a regular basis. And that right there leads into the first aspect. The first advantage is the fighting, the sparring. MMA training is heavily, heavily focused on sparring and fighting is a big part of the school regimen. It's not like many schools where you go to class, you learn katas, you learn drills, you do this, you do that, and maybe the last 10 minutes of class you'll fight, or maybe two, two out of three days a week, or three days a week you'll fight. It doesn't matter. MMA, the heavy focus on training is sparring. Whether you're rolling on the floor, whether you're practicing submissions, whether you're all out boxing, it's just the fighting aspect is very large and forefront and present in most MMA gyms, and that alone will give somebody fighting skills. And that goes for all arts. Regardless of what art you train, if you are not regularly sparring and working with a partner and hitting each other, you're not gonna develop that timing, that distance, that discipline, that intelligence that goes to, into a fight. So right off the bat, I think that's one of the big advantages of MMA fighters is that they have a very concentrated focus on actual fighting and hands-on with an opponent. They also learn a variety of disciplines. So you don't just go to an MMA school and learn how to hit pads. You know, the, you know if it's a good school, you're going to learn stand-up fighting, you know, good strikes, good blocks, 
Uh, you're going to learn ground fighting. You're going to learn takedowns, throws, chokes, submissions. So they kind of take pieces of different arts. They put them together to become a very well-rounded fighter. So as someone who's proficient in an MMA school, or if you go to a school that's highly effective at training fighters, you're not going to get just one discipline. You're going to get a good, rounded um, combination of skills that are going to serve you well in the ring. So that's one thing is a lot of arts don't teach that. You know, you've got arts that are great on the ground, but they might not be as good as standing up. Or you've got arts that are great stand-up arts, but if they go to the ground, they don't know what to do. That's why many people mix arts together, but MMA has that built in. So if you look at any UFC fighter, most of them have very strong stand-up skills, very strong ground skills, and very strong locks, throws, defensive. So just the variety of training is an advantage in itself. Also, they are conditioned, and this, this I think is one of the greatest advantages of someone who trains in MMA, is that that conditioning can really withstand a lot. You're talking trained athletes that focus on this. They put their bodies through some serious abuse to be able to stand up in the fight. These are not people who train the fight for just one quick, you know, one minute or just a quick defense. They're trying to build up endurance to last multiple rounds against heavy abuse and strikes being thrown upon them. So somebody who is conditioned as an MMA fighter can usually take a lot of abuse. Unless you get that one lucky hit in there or you just happen to hit the precision spot or weakness, which is unlikely you really shouldn't count on it, that you have to expect that person is going to be able to take quite a bit, all while dishing it out at the same time. So if you do not have a lot of fighting experience and you're going up against somebody who is a seasoned MMA fighter, my sincerest condolences to you. You're in for a rough time. That conditioning is huge. And since people like to point out, oh, it's just a sport. Yes, UFC is a sport. But let's not forget that sports have rules. You know, there's a referee there that will stop you know, certain abuse. Or if an opponent passes out, or if an opponent taps out, that's not present on the street in real life. You don't have those rules. You don't have the referee, and there's no tapping out. You know, eye hooks, bites, dirty fighting happens in the streets. And when your life is on the line, anything goes. So you take these athletes that have this very high level of skill with restrictions, and now you take those restrictions off, put them in a real life situation where they feel threatened, that danger level, their, their expertise level just jumps up that much more. So you have to understand they are not bound by any rules at this point. And in many cases, they love to fight. If it's an MMA fighter who's fighting for the cage, this is sometimes a career, or at least a very serious hobby, or something that they want to do. These guys live to fight. So now you are putting a situation in the play where somebody who trains to fight, might even do it for a living, has a passion for it, now has to use it to defend themselves, you can expect them to bring their A game. So yes, I fully believe a highly skilled MMA fighter has a great chance and has a great skill set to defend themselves in a real life situation. But as I mentioned before, I don't believe that any art or any discipline is the be all end all to all self-defense, that even, even with MMA, there's still areas that they don't focus on that are worth taking into consideration. One of those considerations is multiple attackers. MMA fighters train to be in the ring with one other fighter. You know, straight on, line of sight. They don't train for 360 degrees. Let's worry about a guy's buddy behind them. They don't train to handle multiple attackers. That doesn't mean the person can't adapt, especially if they've got boxing and they've got that footwork, then they can move around and adapt to multiple people. But it doesn't mean that they've trained to have that mindset and really strategize, you know, where their placement should be, how to use one person against another, how to use your position against theirs. So that's one aspect that the MMA sport fighting does not address is multiple attackers, especially on the ground. You know, BJJ and grappling is really huge in the ring, but that's the last thing you want to do in real life situations. Go to the ground if you don't have to, because especially if they've got friends and you might not know if they have friends friends multiple attackers is just an aspect that isn't present in sport mma fighting that really needs to be kept in consideration in real life and with that comes environmental awareness we've done several videos on environmental awareness and knowing how to assess your situation but the mma fighter doesn't train to look for exits look for obstacles scan a room assess possible threats you know any of any of you out there who are, have been in the military and law enforcement that's something i'm sure you guys have in your mind all the time you know a lot of people won't sit with their back towards the door because they want to see who comes in they want to people watch the mma fighter who trains for the ring doesn't have that mindset or it's not usually ingrained or usually not brought into a school so a lot of that environmental awareness isn't always quite there you know the great at the fighting part of it but your scenario is also a huge aspect and it can be easily overlooked if you're not paying attention to it and with that goes terrain. So in the ring, you've got two fighters in a contained area, flat surface, one-on-one -on -one with a judge or a referee. 
None of that exists in real life. You've got gravel, you've got grass, you've got stairs, you've got multiple level trains, you've got weather, you've got cars, you've got tables, you've got obstacles. All of that brings in that scenario that I mentioned earlier, the could versus the would, is just because you could possibly defend yourself, the context plays a great role. So you really, really, really have to know your surroundings to effectively defend yourself. It's not just the fighting skill, it's also your awareness and strategy of where you are. And then there's weapons. Now, weapons are very, very touchy and a tricky subject just to begin with, because first of all, let's be real, nobody is gonna come up to you with a knife attack and go uh, overhead and stiff arm or just stand there with an arm jab. Weapons are nasty, they are extremely dangerous, and they're very hard to defend against. But that being said, they don't even come into play in MMA gyms. Like, I have not personally seen an MMA gym teach any weapon defense at all. So, that could be a very real aspect of real life self defense. You might be able to punch and kick real well, but what do you do if someone produces a knife? If you've got no experience on defending or even using the knife. So, the aspect of weapon defense is something that's missing from most MMA schools. And because, again, it's not part of the ring, it's another scenario that they don't train for. So, in summary, do I believe that MMA will work in self defense? Yes, absolutely. I think someone who's proficient with MMA fighting skills has a great chance of defending themselves in real life. So when it comes down to it, if self-defense is a goal and in, in you're an MMA fighter, you're off to a great start. You've got the skill set. You've got the conditioning. I just think that there's some supplemental training that you can throw in. I'm always a big advocate on mixing arts. You know, sometimes it's more than just knowing what your strengths are, but you have to identify your weaknesses and then going and learn the answers to those weaknesses. And MMA is no different. You know, again, most MMA schools focus on sport fighting, but that doesn't mean you can't take those skills out into a real life situation. And I just think that there's a lot of supplemental training that you can add to give yourselves even the better chance to defend yourself in a real life situation. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Any MMA fighters out there who are watching this, I would love to hear from you. Have you ever had to use your MMA skills in real life? And if so, how did that work out for you? And if you were to choose, or if you, there's something that you wanted to add to your training, or if you felt that there was an aspect missing, what would it be? You know, this is a great place to kind of bounce ideas back and forth. Other viewers could have recommendations and just share your experience. So again, thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and join us on Patreon. We have a lot of exclusive content for you all there, and we will see you next time.